Alright friends, this might be a test, might not. This is uh, the word Salah here. Salah, what does it mean? Salah, I picked that site and those two sites. One's quite long. That's a washing machine in the background, so I won't be posting this. This is a test then. But I will carry on just in case. So the first one, I think, was this, which is your dictionary. dot com Salah. A word occurring between verses or paragraphs in parts of the Hebrew Bible, often in Psalms perhaps indicating a pause for contemplation. See, I quite like that idea. Salah is defined as a Hebrew word that has been found at the ending of verses in Psalms and has been interpreted as an instruction calling for a break in the singing of the psalm, or it may mean forever. A Hebrew word of unknown meaning at the end of verses. Right, I'm going to stop this because I'm going to blow that, blow that up. Okay, back. A Hebrew word of unknown meaning at the end of verses in the Psalms. Perhaps a musical direction, but traditionally interpreted as a blessing meaning forever and ever. And so it shall be, if you choose. An exclamation, precise meaning unknown, used to punctuate psalm verses. Amen. At the end, hallelujah, throw in a few hallelujahs. Wow. Used to conclude a verse in the psalms. A female given name derived from the biblical interjection, possibly mistaken for a name. Not many people, it's, they're, it's, they're sitting on a the fence there. Should be sitting on a fence. Well, they'll be sitting on a fence, this person commented, unless it was a bot. I'll leave a link to this. Um, there's just this at the bottom. Origin of Salah. Hebrew Salah, if you forgive my pronunciation, being from the West Country of uh, Great Britain, England, Salah. Okay, now Psalm 68:19. Praise the Lord, praise God, our Savior, for each day He carries us in His arms. Salah. Well, <sighs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Okay, no, right, I'll move on. Next one was this. This is quite interesting. It's quite long, so I'll get as far as I dare. What does Salah mean in the Bible and why is it important? Jason Sorosky, 2018, 10th of October. The Book of Psalms. Salah. This beautiful, thoughtful, yet mysterious word appears in the Bible primarily in the book of Psalms. But what does it mean, and why is it there? The question of what Salah means has been debated for centuries. Many have suggested that it means to pause or to reflect. Yeah, And this explanation makes sense based on the context. Yeah, I'll agree with that. However... The uncertainty of what it actually means or why it is there has led some modern Bible translations to take the word Salah completely out of the text 
and place it in the footnotes. So if no one really knows what Salah means and some translations footnote it, why does it matter to us today? Well, you can't mess around with it. <laughs> can't just take things out and put them at the bottom of the pile, can you? The short answer is that no one really knows. The long answer is that it matters very much for several reasons. Salah matters because of where it is found. Okay, no. The word Salah is a Hebrew word that occurs 71 times in the book of Psalms and three times in the Habakkuk. The 71 appearances in Psalms happen within 39 of the Psalms, as the word Salah is often repeated within the same Psalm. But why is it there? Based on the context, it is generally accepted that Salah is a musical term of some sort and is there to provide musical direction. 31 of the 39 psalms that include the word Salah are titled to the choir master. Mm. The, the prophetic book of Habakkuk, like the psalms, is a book of poetry, and the third chapter is a prayer in the form of a song. It is this musical chapter that we find the word Salah. This certainly reinforces the idea that Salah is a kind of musical notation or expression and that it was known and understood by musicians and even those that were just singing along. The fact that Salah is often found at the end of a verse or chapter also supports the idea that it suggests a pause since it shows up in places where we would normally put a period or a new paragraph. Psalm 3 contains the word Salah three times at the end of sections of thought. Uh, -bang. Psalm 3 contains the word Salah three times at the end of sections of thought and at the end of the psalm. Psalm 3. O Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. No salvation for him in God. Salah. For no salvation for him in God. In Jesus. In Jesus. But you, O Lord are a shield about me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. Yeah. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. Salah. From his holy hill. Yeah, cried out loud. This is why, um, this is one of the reasons I'm um, making my psalm videos, because I think, if, if rather than just reading it in my head, it makes sense to extend the radiance of the frequency of the words using my voice rather than just having it rattling around in my head doing whatever it does in there which is why prayer out loud is better than prayer not not out loud because it generates a positive energy that goes out from well that's a, you know it's just a theory but anyway Yeah, I wandered off then. I lay down and slept. I woke again, for the Lord sustained me. Yeah, On another day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord, another day. Yeah, I'd like to be here for the end. Yeah. I will not be afraid of many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Not just against me, though, is it? If that is the me, me, which it is, a little me. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. Yeah, Jesus Christ. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. 
Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Salah. Praise the Lord. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. He's going to win. You watch. <laughs> and everybody will be going, oh, please, Jesus. <laughs> Richard was right. Oh, please forgive us. I'll go on then. <laughs> you know. You never know, do you? You never know. It's worth a try, isn't it? Just in case there is something after it. <laughs> and then God does divide the positive and the negative and make two different separate worlds. <laughs> yeah, that's what it would be like. Perhaps. Split the atom. Positive and negative. Bang. God done it. Already, he's already done it. He's already created everything. Or has he? He's created the idea. The Big Bang, that was God saying, Let there be light. Boom, boom. Just happened. Work of art started. It's a bit cruel, but <laughs> it's like an experiment. Really, like a Nazi experiment. To some people, well, it is psychology, it's an experiment, isn't it? But, um, they we're giving away out really to keep the mind most importantly, keep the mind straight, unwavering without fear. Because you know, if you're standing up for your freedom, you've got to stand up until you're dead, really. Yeah, I just ran out then. 10 minutes, I don't even know if it, it came out, but anyway, I'm gonna get back to this. You understand. Just go to just say, listen, Lord, flipping out. All those all those bad things I did that I regret doing in the past. All those stupid things I did that I think now I shouldn't have done that. Just say, listen, let me start again. Please. Let me try and make amends. It's simple as that. But what you've got to do is <laughs> you've got to be the perfect human being. Or at least try and die trying. To be the perfect human being, we got the role model. That's as simple as that. I don't understand why people don't get it. Really? Anyway. Oh, I'll carry on with this. Salah matters because it is a transliteration. Think about it. We have Bibles written in English because the overwhelming majority of the original Hebrew and Greek words can be translated into English. However, there are a handful of words in the Bible that are not or cannot be translated. When this happens, what we read is not a translation. It is a transliteration. A transliteration. A translation is when a Hebrew word is translated into an English word that means the same thing, for example. For example, the Hebrew word Eretz, 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 is tra translated to Earth because they have the same meaning. So we English speakers just read Earth. I prefer Eretz. Eretz. Flat Eretz. There you go. Flat Eretz. That's when you know the earth is really is flat. Is when they when they mess around like that. I don't know what I just said then. A transliteration is when a Hebrew word is simply sounded out to English so we can read and pronounce it. An example is Hallelujah. Hallelujah is a transliteration of a Hebrew word that literally means praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus is the savior jesus was the sacrifice so praise jesus
praise Jesus indeed and say thank you very much for teaching me the way to go. <laughs> to get out of this already is out on earth. Earth is a earth is like a, like you know, it's like dipping your toe in hell, really, living on earth. Isn't that? <laughs> you got a laugh. But on YouTube it's not it's sort of like you're fully submerged, aren't you? Aqualung. Snorkel. Submarine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise Jesus. He's the way. Just be like Jesus as much as best you can. That's the best way until we die. Everyone knows that. A lot of people fight it, think. Well, I don't know, I don't understand. Instead of being translated as praise God, this word has been left for us to sound out as it would be in the original Hebrew and continues to be a powerful expression of praise. Praise. Like, hallelujah. The fact that Salah is transliterated and not translated doesn't diminish its importance. Instead, it signifies that when we read Salah, we are pronouncing the word generally the same way it would have been pronounced thousands of years ago by those who originally wrote and read it. Salah matters simply because it is in the Bible. Oh, there you go. The Holy Bible. Not the stonemason's bible or the freemason's bible it's the holy bible the word the holy word or as holy as it can be we know what the holy the, the holiest of holy can be it's simple isn't it it's perfection like jesus that's what we gotta be or strive to be the bible is truly the words of god given to us and every one of those words matters even the words we don't fully understand and can't properly translate. After all, we can't understand all there is to know about God. Absolutely. So it stands to reason that there would be words in Scripture that are beyond our full comprehension. This doesn't diminish words like Salah, but in some ways can make them a little more meaningful. Absolutely, I'll agree with that. Another transliterated word in the Bible that we don't fully understand is the word Shigionoth. Gosh. And its singular form, Shigeon. Each of these words appears in the Bible only once. The important thing for us here is that these two words appear in the chapters that are written as a musical and, you guessed it, also include the word Salah. I've got to say that again. Where am I? This is quite long, this. So I'll read it all. Shigionath is found in Habakkuk 3.1. At the beginning of Habakkuk's <laughs> prayer song, which includes three uses of the word Salah, a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet, according to Shigionath. Shigayon, Shigayon is found in the title of Psalm 7, a Shigayon of David, which he sang to the Lord. Sang it to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Always, you've got to, got to, you just got to say, listen, everybody on earth will turn to Jesus Christ. You watch, they will. Or well, they're mad. Delusional. <laughs> I don't know. I'm only guessing. But no, that's the way, isn't it? Got to be. Positive and negative. What are you going to be? Which fishbowl are you going to be in? For the next work of art. And if I get there, and I, I, I would entrust every 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 man to not listen to the woman when she let a they offer a bit of fruit. <laughs> you say, no, thank you, darling. You have it. You have it. I'll see you later on. Yeah, I suppose you're going down the pub now. 
yeah, with your mates, yeah. Oh, yeah, I hope you have a good time. But no, I'm going to stay without without the bite of fruit. But the woman, yeah, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it. You know, because you work hard, you do your bit. Your great mother. <laughs> you should just be able to let your hair down. It's just us blokes got to have a, you know, sort of thing. A bit of responsibility and a bit of, you know, resist, resist temptation. What will be, will be. It's resisting temptation. That's the thing, see? That's where Adam fell down. He just resisted temptation. And he was coerced into it by Eve. Eve. So, I don't know if the pinger has gone yet, if this has stopped. Um, I, I can't see. Related music. Some believe it has to do with strong emotion. And that it... Right, some believe that it has to do with strong emotion and the lyrical content of the songs where it is used would certainly support this idea related to music. Well, everything, every noise is a music, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Yeah, of course it is. Salam matters because it encourages us to pause and reflect. Yeah. Reflect, you pause and reflect a lot. No mad rush is it to get to know everything. Many commentators think that Salah meant to pause or to reflect. This could have been a request for the reader or listener to pause and think about what has just been said. Or it could have been a space for voices to pause and for instruments to play alone. We don't really know for certain. Regardless of the word, Regardless, the word Salah itself indeed causes us to pause and consider what God may be saying even when we don't fully understand. It pauses us. Yeah, regardless, the word Salah itself indeed causes us to pause and consider what God may be saying even when we don't fully understand. Exactly that. Salah gives us an opportunity to take a moment away from this crazy, busy, non-stop life. We all tend to live. Not all of us. You can't say we all tend to live. Not all of us are like busy, non-stop, crazy. Some of us do stop and ponder a lot. <laughs> Why not? Consider the immense mysteries and wonders of God. Consider. It's not a mystery, is it? It's simple. What we've got to do. We've got simple instruction. It's as simple as that. Paul speaks to us. Paul speaks to this in Colossians 2, 2 to 3. My goal is that they may be encouraged in hearts and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, Jesus, Jesus, Christ, the, the Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, not in the lodge. Ultimately, Salat is a word that reminds us all to pause and reflect on Jesus, the Christ, Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus. The J didn't come into into um, existence until about 1300, 1400, 1500, something like that. Greenwich Mean Time. Apparently. In whom we find all treasure and knowledge. We can't ever truly hope to understand all that God is and all that Christ does for us daily. We can't ever truly hope to understand all that God is. All that Christ does for us daily, knowing that it is fitting that this beautiful word Salah should be like our faith, just beyond our full understanding. Yeah, mysterious. Very. Thanks, Jason. Blah blah blah. I'll leave a link to this. I might. Have, I'll try and read this last one because I think it's quite quick. 
This is um, Aberin Publications. Salah in Biblical Hebrew. Now, I don't know how to... Okay. Meaning, take it away. Y'all. All together now. All together now. Hallelujah. All together now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All the time. Thank you, Lord. Just say, listen, gosh. What have you done? You just blew me away again. <laughs> Honestly. Let's have a look. The word of Salah in the Bible. The mysterious word of Salah is an expletive of similar gist as the familiar words Amen and Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With as main distinction that we don't really know that Salah means or what function it might have had. Mm, could be a, um, an Amen. Perhaps. No, it wouldn't be an Amen. In that instance, three. I'm guessing. Salah occurs three times in the Shigioneth Noth based prayer of the prophet Habakkuk. <laughs> Habakkuk. <laughs> and 71 times in 39 Psalms. Its most commonly occurs per Psalm just once, namely in Psalm 720, 21, 44. 47, 48, 50, 54, 60, 61, 75, 81, 82, 83, 85, and 143. Or twice in Psalm 4, 9, 24, 39, 49, 52, 55, 57, 59, 62, 67, 76, 84, 87, and 88. Hmm, 88, eh? But it also occurs three times in Psalm 3. Ooh, 3, 3, 33. 303,333 and um, 32, 332, 46, 66, 68. Oh dear, that's four sixes there. Seven and seven, and 140. And once it occurs four times in Psalm 89, it occurs three times at the end of a Psalm 324 and 46, and all Psalms that contain Salah except 61 and 81, have titles that indicate the kind of psalm. It appears that the meaning of and function of our word salah have been missing in action since antiquity. The authors of the Septuagint translation, Septuagint, Gint, translated this word with diapsalma, Diapsalma, diasalma, diasalma, which means as much as through the psalm or intersalmic. The Vulgate offers the even more enigmatic semper, semper, which means always semper. Some scholars have proposed that salah may have been used to indicate a change in rhythm or theme. But the obvious lack of consistency makes this idea unlikely correct unlikely correct. Themes change more often in Psalms than Salahs occur. Other main, main, others maintain that Salah marks a moment of contemplation which curiously suggests that the rest of the Psalter required no such regard. Others have forwarded elaborate theories based on grammar derived from Masoretic vowel symbols, but these symbols were added many centuries after the truth behind Salah was lost, lost, eh, or hidden. And these theories can subsequently be dismissed, or it's just easy, easily to discern it, really, I suppose. Okay. I'll leave a link to this, and I think that co about covers it, because I'm, my next psalm, which I'm just going to publish after this, uploads, is Psalm 3. And I, I did need to find out what that meant before I used it, but I did use it before I, I did use it. I did record the Psalm 3 before I actually um, understood all of this about it. 
So I think I used it as a pause and just a, like a reflection, really. I think in mine. All right. God bless you all, friends and my enemies, trolls, all those that call me slimy. Yeah. All right. So I'll leave links to all these. Cheers, my friends. God bless. Praise the Lord. Honestly, do it. Just say, listen, Lord, please help me. I need flipping help. Please help me. Show me the way. And he'll say, you know the way. You know the way. And it's a path of righteousness. And if you follow me, that will be the path you will take. It's as simple as that. And then God will split the atom. Yeah.